We're very happy to welcome the president of NARUP, Tess Taylor. Tess, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. I'm I delighted. appreciate it. You know, I'm curious, what was your inspiration for forming NARUP in the first place? I wanted information and access, and I found precious little of it, so I went out and got it. Okay. And then it turned out that uh, other people appreciated what I was able to garner for myself and pass on, and so an organization was born. Ah, it occurred probably within a year of me graduating from college. And I shouldn't say that there was no information available. This was slightly prior to the internet age, though. So one couldn't just message someone on Facebook or tweet or Twitter them or message them the way we do today. So um, I was very lucky. My first job in the business was working at Avalon Attractions uh, right after I graduated from college, which at the time was the largest concert promoter in Southern California. It was a tremendous job, a great opportunity, loads of fun, and I went to shows eight days a week, five shows a night, you name it, every major show. And in the course of my, um, my, my development there, this was of course my first job after college, um, I started to look around for organizations to become part of, trade organizations, what have you, because I really clearly saw and understood that you have to surround yourself with winning people if you want to succeed. And through uh, the process of working at a concert promoter, I had a tremendous asset available to me, even as a you know lower rung employee, which was free concert tickets. I could get at that time a pair of free tickets to any show. And I could see that that was um, tremendous cachet and that was currency, essentially. That you could, you know, people came to the concert promoter uh, from every area of the industry. And when a concert is put on, you have the manager, the artist manager, the artist himself, of course, the record label is involved, radio, press, everybody gets in the game when a concert is put on. So I was um, brushing shoulders, you might say, with a lot of very interesting people. But I wanted to... I wanted to meet them as well and not just have a phone conversation or be the one to take the message. Mind you, again, I was just an assistant at that time. So that was my motivation to f try to find an organization. And I didn't find anything that was suitable at the time, so just very rough and tumble types of loose, not even organizations, but occasional gatherings and mixers. The RIAA has, of course, always existed. That's the Recording Industry Association of America, but they're not really a networking organization. That's a legislative, a lobbying organization uh, to which the labels themselves are members right. and wasn't really appropriate for someone at my level. So um, I looked around and saw nothing. So one day I just phoned up a few friends, uh, secretaries from record companies, and said, hey, you want to meet for a dinner, or cocktail mixer, whatever. So I think the very first NARIP meeting, this was, this, it wasn't even called NARIP at the time, was three people, myself plus two. And it was just a very informal, and I decided I'll do it again in a month or so. And the next meeting, there might have been five. And from there, it continued. And I, as a Virgo, kept a very good mailing list, which uh, today reaches over 100,000 people. A lot easier with email than with actual physical envelopes and stamps, but that's what it took and that's what it was. So um, this continued and pretty soon people were asking me, well, when's the next one? When's the next one? So I was organizing small rooms in restaurants to bring people together. Very soon I was booking clubs. Um, this was there was no financial gain in it whatsoever at the time. I was merely gathering people. Um, there was no charge. It was just a simple, to me, an interesting activity. And um, it, it, it continued to grow. Uh, from Avalon Attractions, I went to working at MCA Records. And this was back uh, at a time when the record industry was hotter than hot. This was the fat years of the business. Right. When there was money to burn. It's a great time to be in the record business, and it's still a great time, although it's changed a lot, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. So in any case, NARIP uh, uh, grew. At that time, I called it the Los Angeles Music Network, and I didn't have any real intention or I didn't know that, that it would grow into something. I just continued to do it because it made sense, and it was fun, and it was serving a purpose for me and actually a lot of other people as well. So um, the LA Music Network grew. I was working uh, at uh, MCA Records at the time, and pretty soon I thought, well, you know, this is a tremendous group of people that I am 
gathering on a fairly regular basis now. A lot of them are my age, they're pretty fresh out of college, they're ambitious, they're bright, but they don't have the large uh, press department behind them that a lot of the other executives do, but they're still doing interesting things. So why don't I do a little newsletter, put a spotlight on them? That's what I did. Um, the thing was a hit. In the second edition of that newsletter, I secured an interview with someone who never granted interviews, which was quite impressive um, at the time, with an a &R executive by the name of John David Kolodner, who was pretty famous for bringing Aerosmith back, and it was a very um, heavily involved and uh, made a bunch of artist careers. Right. So he was a tremendously interesting, intelligent, eccentric cool, funny guy, and it was a great interview, so it was a smashing success, so overnight I had this wonderful little newsletter that was on the map. And uh, along the way, again, I, I still had no particular profit motive. I started to charge a couple of bucks for admission at the events and a couple of bucks for the newsletter just to cover printing and postage, but as long as my expenses were covered, I didn't really care, because I had a job and I had a decent paycheck, and to me it was just something that was interesting and useful, and I was beginning to really sort of hit the sweet spot, if you might say. Um, then I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to get some uh, heavyweights in, and how can I get them involved? Well, let's put on a panel discussion. Everybody loves to talk, listen to me. So um, that's what I did. And so the first panel discussion I had, I think it was in the late 80s um, at a club called Young Moguls off of Hollywood Boulevard. Which I was, was a there. Huge, yes, it was a huge kind of a warehousey mm -hmm. thing. Um, I think we said free admission if you show up before 7, so mm -hmm. everybody showed up before 7. Right. It was 91. <laughs> it was 90. Good memory, Rich. Yeah. It had Steve Rennie, uh, Mark Cates, and Mark Geiger on this panel, and I called it Artist Development in the 90s, and that was pretty cutting edge at the time. It was the 90s. Um, Mark Cates, of course, was a premier a and record executive at uh, Geffen Records. Um, I don't remember exactly where Mark Geiger Mark Geiger was, but William he was, Morris. He was well. He's. I think that's where he is now, but I don't know where he oh, was where he at was that then, time. Yeah. But he was a you know very successful agent, mm -hmm. and has gone on to do very very interesting things. And of course, Steve Rennie is now the manager of Incubus, a very successful act. So it was a tremendous success. I remember arriving at the venue and seeing just a load of people standing around and. There was a line, and it was just I'm like, what's going on? And then it dawned on me, they're all coming to my event. Mm -hmm. It was just shocking to yeah. me, but it was fabulous. So I just had created this little thing, and it was very successful. Um, and I continued to do it until five years later, um, I left my job at MCA to do it full time. And then in 98, I established the National Association of Record Industry Professionals, whose predecessor had been the LA Music Network. Right. And I made it a simple division because since there had been no business plan in the formation of the LA Music Network, um, it had just sort of grown very organically and lots of people joined and some, you know. And I thought it was important to put artists in one group and professionals in another because I find that while their needs and interests certainly converge, they are also very separate. Um, so Los Angeles Music Network now serves artists. We have performance opportunities and artist development opportunity to, opportunities for them. But NARIP is for professionals. I say it's NARIP is for the people behind the desk, behind the stage, the people who support the artist's career like you, Rich. And you're one of our premier members. <laughs> okay. So, Wonderful. All you wanted to know about NARIP.